Niggas have showed them attention. Right. <laughs> so women don't trip off attention like men do. Okay? Now when a man gets some attention from a woman, we geek. Yes. Cause that don't happen <laughs> yeah, to us it. all the time. Except I mean, rip. Except, except rip. rip. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like Rip said, everybody subscribe on YouTube. Thanks. You and you radio. That's the letter U, the and sign, the letter U radio. Two, three. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, fellas? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's the U and U podcast, episode eight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still here. Hit them with the line, Scott. Eight shows. What? <laughs> Hit them with the line. We survived it. We survived another show. <laughs> you got that's, that's the line, man. You got eight, eight, eight shows in. <laughs> we survived another show. It's the U and U podcast. Tonight we got a new artist. Rip, give us the name. Uh, the artist's name is Disgo, D-I-S-G-O, Fever, F-E-V-A, and the song is Class Picture. Mm. Class Picture. We're going to start it out with some music, and then we're going to get right to it. It's the U and U podcast. Let's go. It's a cool video too. You check it out. I was just about to say that we were sitting here actually watching the video as we listened to the song, and um, what I'm gonna do is make sure that the link to the video is in our uh in our in episode eight. 
Check that out. Support that. Give them a shout out. Let them know what you think. The video yeah. looks real good. Yeah. Real good. Yeah, well actually, done. Tied into the song. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, well and, done. And let them know where you heard it at, too. And let them know where you heard it first. Right. Yep. <laughs> it's the You and You podcast, baby. We here live. We got to my left, uh, I am. What is, what is the blog? Give them the blog. It's uh, greatestiamblog.com. On IG, it's greatest.i.am.blog. Greatestiamblog.com. And make sure you put that link on the, uh, on the video as yes, well. Sir. And to my right, we got the author. Of hypocrisy in America. Talk to him, Scott. How y'all doing? My name is Scott. Everybody, please follow me on Twitter. S J H eight zero. Got a link in my bio. Take you straight to Amazon. You can pick up my latest work, Hypocrisy in America, as well as my first book, Systemic Racism, Capitalism, Alliance of Oppression. A lot of people email me about this first book. Still, it's been out a little over two years. I was checking my stats. I just sold a few books of these, or a few copies of these in Australia. I don't hey. know anybody in Australia. Hey, but the you and you, we yeah. worldwide, baby. We worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> International. <laughs> hey, so we got authors in here. We got bloggers in here. And they call me a lot of names, but only a few to my face. But tonight, I'm <laughs> O King Johnny, O-H underscore King, K-I-N-G underscore Johnny, J-O-N-N-Y. You can find me on Instagram, You and You Podcast on Instagram. That's you, A-N-D-U Podcast on Instagram. Make sure you follow us. And last but definitely not least, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> my man, Littles, talk to him, Littles. What's up? It's your boy, Littles. You can, fo- you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. At Littles, L I T T L E S, one one two six. Yes, sir. And that's also an easy way to remember my birthday. So shout uh-oh, out. Uh oh, uh oh. And you can send <laughs> gifts to my address. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we just want to just, you know, keep hitting y'all with that content, man, and just keep supporting us. Keep giving us your feedback. We really appreciate, we appreciate it. it. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's the you. Oh, and also, we're working on coming to the actual podcast. That will be coming soon. Um, we got some kinks to work out with that, but be on the lookout for that so you'll be able to get us on your phones. So for all you YouTubers that's complaining that the YouTube is too long, hey, you can listen and keep going. Mm-hmm. That'll be coming soon. But until then, talk to them, Littles. All right, well, you know what I do. Friday's all about music. So yesterday, DJ Khaled dropped his 10th uh, studio album. That's crazy. He has 10 albums already. Yeah, wow. wow. Yeah, he dropped his 10th <laughs> studio album. I heard like three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was only like two or three. Yeah. He dropped his 10th uh, album, which is called Grateful. Okay. He literally has any and everyone you can think about in, in music. From Do, does, does he have Michael Jackson? Except Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. He got Beyonce and Jay-Z. Cool, cool. Drake, Rihanna, Wayne, Chance, wow. et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And somehow... Somehow it managed to be garbage as hell. Are you wow. serious? Wow. Garbage. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a new thing. We we scratching the stars. How many oh. shots do you give it? <laughs> Out of five shots, I give it two. Two, two shots? Yeah. Patron shots or henny shots? <laughs> henny henny shots ain't gonna do nothing to you. Uh, you two shots the, of the patron. You can't get the party started off two shots. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man. Sh- Twenty three tracks. Now, 23 tracks, I deleted 16 of them on my phone. Wow. wow. <laughs> so. so out of curiosity, which ones did you keep? I kept the, I kept the song with uh, Kodak Black and okay. Gucci Man. Okay. Uh, I kept the Drake one because I hadn't heard it all the way through. Okay. I'm, I think I'm about to delete that one. I'm not feeling that wow. one. Wow. Uh, hold on. Let me get right to it. I kept the interlude by this Canadian rapper named Belly. He's dope. Okay. Uh, a song with Party Next Door, Down for Life. Uh, iced out my arms with a uh, future. Wow. And uh, yeah, future's on here a lot. Really? Yeah. Wow. A couple future joints, and he got. Let me tell you, the worst song on here to avoid at all costs, unless you want to hear something terrible. <laughs> Travis Scott has a song with Nas. Wow. And it is one of the worst songs you'll hear this year, with one of the wow. worst really? hooks you'll Nas hear this song? year. Really? So who who's carrying the song? I guess there would be. There's a lot of Travis on that song. Okay. But Nas, it's just. Like whatever good credit he built up with Nas' album done on the last album, he just lost on this one. Wow. So I don't care if his album is done right now anymore. Wow. <laughs> is that bad? It's terrible, man. Wow. I got to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> he must, he must I don't want, something different. I'm upset. I don't even want to talk about this album no more. But uh, I think my man Rip heard something that was actually worth listening to yesterday. Yeah, talk to him, Rip. Uh, R&B album that came out. Uh, I don't know if 
too many folks know this guy. His name is Adrian Marcel. Mm, okay. Adrian Marcel, he's from the Bay Area, Oakland Cat. He has some very good songs. His album is titled GMFU, and that's uh, GMFU. <laughs> Yeah, what 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 is this? Is, it, is that good morning? It's, it's an acronym for Got Me Fucked Up. Oh, okay. Uh, I like okay. that. But that it's an R and B album. It's it's very good. He had a couple of mixtapes out. If you look him up on YouTube, on Spotify and stuff, you'll find him. It's a very good album and he actually has the Raphael Sadiq stamp. So uh, you know what I'm saying? Did he, he did he come out with something before? Yeah, he had I think uh, I, I he had a party his... song that came out before called Two AM. I think I heard that. Yeah. I think I heard that. Um he got the Rafael Sadiq stamp, so you know what I'm saying. If Rafael Sadiq is a legend in the oh R&B yeah. game, no so doubt, no doubt. If he got that stamp, you know he's he good. But legend. check yeah. the album out; it's real good. Cool, okay. cool. What what else you got, Littles? Yes. Uh, thank you for that, Rip. Some good music you can actually listen to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just a quick thing on music. Uh, did everybody see the Meek Mill video? I did. Safari. I saw it earlier. <laughs> So 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 let's get let's let so you know how we do. Let's give the backdrop. So Meek is at a BT after it's, look, it's looking like some kind of pre party in LA because the BT awards, awards out there in LA. So and that's actually airs tomorrow? I'm not sure when I'm not sure when it, sure when it, sure when it is. Sure when I know they, they filmed it this weekend. Because yeah. that's not that's live, that's done live, right? That's not it may be tomorrow. Can, you, can we yeah, pull that up? It and could check, be. Right? I think yeah, pull that up. Normally I think come it's, on Sundays. Yeah, and I think they do yeah, live. They don't do pre uh, Yeah, it comes uh, this Sunday, okay. June twenty fifth. Wow, okay, I'm yeah, actually tomorrow. have to watch that. That's okay. when they taping it. I'm not sure if it's going to be live. Let me check. I think B two Awards is always live. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think the one that that uh, that's taped delay is the Hip Hop Awards. Yeah, the Hip Hop okay, is taped. Okay. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, but the, it's definitely being taped tomorrow. Yeah, it's going. I'm pretty. I'm almost certain it's going to be live. Okay, so they were at a pre B T Award party. Yeah. He was, it appears he was standing outside, like yeah. maybe yeah. before you go in. Right. Meek pulls up, and I guess some of Meek's people jumped out his, on him. His barbs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at the video, and I'm like, first of all, that was the worst jump job I've ever right, seen right. in my life. Did he even get touched? I, he really. didn't. He didn't. I mean, for him to have on all white, and still be not all even a, not even a smudge. Not even a Was smudge. His clothes even wrinkled? At not no. at all. <laughs> now his man, Safari's man, yeah, props yeah. to him. He he went right at the dude. Yeah, he the brother in the suit. He yeah. caught one he of them. He had on all white too. He had on all white. He caught one of them. Nice. And then they ended up kind of roughing him up a little bit, but mm-hmm. they didn't really really do no. Th- the whole thing looked pointless to me. Yeah, because Meek didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. They jumped out on him. They didn't really get him. And it just looked pointless to me, and it and it I, it saddened me because I'm like, these adults, we, these aren't teenagers, yeah, man. That's, that's, oh, that's the, unnecessary. It's, and it's you're unnecessary. not even dating Nikki no more, so and you're not you dating Nikki no more. So why are you tripping? <laughs> and I and it it takes me back to I'm assuming this has something to do with what he had to say about Meek as far as Meek being the cause uh, of him, and, yeah, 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 him and Nikki Jurassic breaking up. Yeah. By sending her a video of him with another, yeah, with another chick. chick, yeah. And I'm a because outside of that, I can't see no other reason why he would have an issue with Safari. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You took his girl, <laughs> and you, you you took his girl and jump him. Right. Like, what, y'all not what? even together no more. Right. And y'all not together no. Why do you kid? See, this goes back to what I say. You gotta just move on, man. <laughs> move on with alone. your life. And he just basically took another L. Because yep. he looked dumb. He is the king, the king of hell. He is the king of hell. <laughs> he looks dumb. But go ahead, Littles. I'm sorry. I had to say that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was pretty much, that was pretty much it about that because there's nothing to talk about. We know Meek can't fight. We saw that video. We the saw g- the video you punch in the bag. Punch we right. don't we saw that video. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe you. And you need more people, more people than you had that can actually fight. I'm serious. Let me jump in for a quick go second ahead. Uh, before you move on to something else, Littles. When I watched this, the first thing I thought about is this is a, a good example of why we need to bring brotherhood back. Yes. Because I don't know what was said behind the scenes between Meek and Safari. Right. But whatever was going on between them, it, it could have been handled handled by a simple conversation. That's it. Not only are y'all, y'all not teenagers, y'all men. Y'all entertainers. Hey. Y'all in the limelight. Yeah. It, it, it's pointless to have 
you know, brothers jumping on each other it's in 2017 with the problems corny. we got is as black people out here. <laughs> right. We we jumping up on other it's black corny. folks. So yeah. we, we got to bring brotherhood. If back. anything, y'all should have got together and right. did a song together. And I mean, for real, song. even if <laughs> we, we don't want to hit that. Right. Even if we agree to disagree. <laughs> You do you, I'm going to do me. Yeah, right. It don't yeah, have to yeah. come to that. We got too many other problems out here. I mean, and if you want to be petty, dap each other up, laugh, be like, yeah, yeah we had her and all this other yeah. stuff. But, but, it, <laughs> but it, at the end of the day, nobody cared. It's, it, right. Nobody was expecting him to go beat up Safari right. or like, oh, right. man, Safari. Punk. Nobody was right. thinking about that whole situation. And I, and I understand everybody not going to be best friends. No. Everybody's not going to love each other. Everybody's not going to be friendly. But, man, let me you tell know. you something. One thing, one thing I've learned in life and especially in adulthood, when you, to me, when you reach a certain age, it don't matter for real. Yeah. What matters is your your family, your kids, you know, your immediate surrounding. Outside mm-hmm. of that, it's not yeah. it's not that important. It's time to put that foolishness away. And if, and if you were if you were a high artist and a and a millionaire and you got money and cars and girls right. at your waking, supposed to be celebrating, why, happy. Why are you tripping? <laughs> Who right. cares? Yeah, man, that was foolishness. <laughs> Who cares? But you know, that's the world we live in, man. It, it, you know, some. I, I'm just a firm believer. If you if you a whack dude, you just a whack dude. It's right. nothing. I agree. With it's that. no yeah. amount of money that's going to change, change that. that. It's, exactly. Fabulous said it years ago when he was dealing with Ray J. Just because you got money, you just a lame with money. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 just some lame people yeah. out here, man. It's just simple but as that. I said this before in the group chat that Meek is the one of those type of dudes that just lived in the neighborhood that you know. Everybody just accepted him because he lived in the neighborhood. He ain't no real street dude or no tough guy. No I mean, guy. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what he is, but I'll just say it like this: he, he wouldn't scare me at all. It ain't nothing about him that's scary to me, <laughs> especially you know after I mean? the gym video. It's there's nothing about him that's scary. But I mean, I just thought that whole situation was totally unnecessary. Yeah, was, I, I thought so too. And he just basically he could have he could possibly have created. A situation where they really ne- didn't have to be one. You right. know what I'm saying? A park situation. I, I, yo, it's funny you say that because that's exactly what yeah. I thought about. Wow. I said, "Yo, this is like some pop it's type a, stuff." It's a park situation. And then you wonder why you you out chilling one day and somebody just start right. popping right. off at Shoot, you, man. You yeah. can't you can't just do jump out on people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's the world we live in, man. Go ahead, Lotus. <laughs> All right, uh, piggybacking on the fight, uh, the Floyd Mayweather fight is coming up in August. And uh, they both started training Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. They started training for their August 26th fight in Vegas. Okay. How interested are we in that? I'm more interested in the lead up to the fight. I'm hoping that Showtime does that uh, all access or 24-7, whatever yeah. it's called. Okay. I think that's going to be the real entertainment. Okay, okay. I, the I'm, trash talk. Yeah. yeah, the trash talk is going to really be epic. I'm really not super interested I'm in I'm not either. Especially since they said the rumor of the cost of the fight may be $99. Oh wow! Oh, fuck, so that's crazy. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. It's not something that I'm super interested nah. in. I mean, it's it's Floyd, so I'm always interested because it's Floyd. But, but he, I mean, it ain't like he's fighting. He's not fighting. He's right gonna he's gonna kill his guy. If he don't knock him out, he's, he's just gonna kill his guy. <laughs> he's just going. He's gonna kill his. He's gonna probably toy with him for twelve rounds to show that he shouldn't be in the ring. I'd rather would have seen him fight. You know, a, a real boxer. It's it's JV versus. Yeah. I must. I'm feeling like it's gonna be JV versus yeah. boxer. It's. <laughs> Because it's not now. And if this was going to be an MMA fight, then maybe that might yeah, be something. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, watch it then, speaking yeah. on that, uh, Connor signed uh, a portion of his contract that said he will not go rogue, meaning he won't kick or elbow or do any MMA stuff. Because if he does, he could lose a substantial amount of his so-called or rumored a hundred million dollar paycheck. Whoa, so, that's what that's what McGregor's getting. Yeah, the rumor is he might get upwards of a hundred million dollars. So what's the wow. rumor for Floyd? I've heard Floyd anywhere from two fifty to three fifty. I will well, fight agree. Floyd for a hundred million. But there, but this makes this makes total sense to me though, because when you think about it, they call Floyd Money Mayweather, so he's only concerned about the money. He's not concerned about like his total boxing uh, legacy or whatever. Well, he, no, I don't. I, no, don't get me wrong. I don't think him doing this fight affects his legacy. Yeah. I mean, Floyd is the man. Yeah. Hey, you can't take that away from him. It's, it's mm-hmm. you know, it's like. Well, I ain't gonna get in that, but <laughs> you can't take that away from him. You know what I'm saying? I just think, I just don't. I personally don't get the hype around this fight. Yeah, I, I just don't. don't 
it's not like he. I mean, he he's not fighting a a, a, a proven boxer. So nah, he's a, he's an MMA. This guy. is the great white hype for those who've seen that to go to throw it back. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Now, now, me, good now point. what would be entertaining <laughs> is if this dude get in the ring with Mayweather and actually do something with Mayweather. That's which, all you need is one punch, which I'm totally doubting is going to happen. That would, be but you never that, know. That, that, but if that if, would be if he get it at Joan and catch Mayweather, now that would be interesting. <laughs> Because that would that would lead to a whole lot of things. But granted, I mean, Floyd's been retired. He ain't fought. when was his last fight? Going on two years now, I think. Two years. Andre Berto mm-hmm. dominated him. Almost two years or two years or more that he hasn't fought. So I mean, I, I'm me personally. I, it's one of them joints. I could find out what happened on ESPN and be good. This, is a, this, this is a strictly <laughs> this is a strictly money fight. Floyd said a long time ago, "I'm a prize fighter." True. Yeah. He fights for the prize. I mean, he's the man. He's if, the man. If McGregor is getting a hundred million dollars, that's that's the biggest payday Listen, he's ever going to see. I right? will fight because them MMA for guys don't get paid like that. I, I fight will, Floyd for a million. I guys. fight Floyd for a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I, I give him more work than McGregor. You think this so? Is, this is a good look I for Conor McGregor. Well, I'm, I'm I'm classified as a heavyweight, so it might not be a fair <laughs> yeah, fight. That's I might true. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might beat Mayweather down. I just um, want to know how much the UFC is getting off Conor because they're allowing their number one star to yeah, fight in true. another sport. True. So you know Dana White not going to let him go without I just paying think, something. I just think it would have been more interesting if it was an MMA fight. Yeah, oh, that would be yeah, yeah, that'd be very quick though. It'd be the exact same. I still think it would be more. It's, it's, it would have been more interesting for me to see Mayweather yeah, go into adjust, another arena yeah, yeah. versus somebody mm-hmm. coming into his arena. Right. He's the man. He's I don't. Right. He's beating every top boxer there is. I don't got an MMA fighter coming in and out boxing. Him. Right. Yeah, he's already done. This is boxing. boxing. That was my first. When I heard about it, my first question was: Are they fight? Are they boxing or are they MMA? Right. Once they said it was boxing, I said, well, I, "I don't need to see that. <laughs> yeah. I already know the outcome of that." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it is what it is. What else you got? Uh, sticking in sports, we had the NBA draft Thursday night. Oh my! And uh, I know it's a soft spot for uh, for John. Uh, don't <laughs> remind me. <laughs> uh, one of the best two way players in the league got traded for Chris Dunn and Zach Levine. Of course, I'm talking about Jimmy Butler. Well. Being a diehard Bulls fan, unfortunately, once again, I will suffer. <laughs> I already suffer in football as it is. Now I will suffer in basketball. And y'all wonder why I talk about LeBron so much? Because my team is pointless. <laughs> Who trades their star player for a bag of jelly beans? I was just getting ready to ask you. Why, why did they do Bulls. that? What was, what was the thinking behind it? it was I logic. don't know. And they gave him a draft pick, too. Here's my theory. My theory is they finally came to grips that they never should have fired Tibbs, and this was the gift. They was like, we we sorry. Here's Jimmy Butler. Wow. <laughs> That's my theory. It had to be. Or oh, he got some naked pictures of them somewhere else. Tibbs coached Minnesota, right? Yeah, he's yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, right, Minnesota. Right, right, right. Okay. He wanted, he's been, he's been, because tra- you know, every year they've been talking about trading Butler. And Tibbs is, every year, has made it clear he would love to have Jimmy Butler. So now he got him. So now, a, mm, so now Minnesota, they got, I'm sorry, Littles. They yeah. got they got Rubio, Cat, oh. Wiggins, Butler. They got yeah. a Ooh, squad. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. They got a squad. And I think the Bulls, by doing that, they just admitted that they're in full rebuild, rebuild mode. Oh, of course. Of now, course. Now the rumor is that D. Wade, after signing that deal, of uh, $23.8 million he's going to make by opting in, he might get bought out. Which will free him up to go anywhere he wants. Well, right. And he said, and his people said, uh, don't be surprised if he makes his way back down to Miami. I can see that. Wow. wow. I can see I'm that. I'm not sure I want. I feel some type of way about D washed. I mean, D Wade. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see D Wade going two places. If he get bought out, he's going to be back in Miami so he can retire there, or he's going to go run oh, with LeBron. Yeah. I, I, I can see that. That's just a given to me. I can see that. I, can see I that. mean, he gonna get it, get he he opted in for the money. Right. That's it. Absolutely. We we ain't about to do nothing in this league right now. You know what I'm saying? He's catching so, up for all the years that he took pay cuts for LeBron and Bosch. I mean, but Wade shouldn't be hurting though. It ain't like Wade was getting pennies in Miami. Yeah. You don't think his wife would like him to go out to L.A. Well, that don't matter. I don't think she's tripping that off. That don't matter. I think they I think they're established enough with They're an older couple. They ain't yeah, no, they, I don't think they're they, tripping off Hollywood. They ain't okay. They the type that's that's we we good wherever we at. Yeah, you know what I mean? They, they too in love to be worrying about that. Mm. Yeah, I don't I and, and Wade Wade is on the back end of his career, so the whole LA thing, you know, I mean he the endorsements he's gonna get, he's yeah, already, he already doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So mm. he's good on that. Um what else you got, Little? Oh hold on one second. Hold oh, on one my second. Bad. 
Sorry to cut in. No, no problem. Why are we on the draft? The young brother that went number one That's overall. That's what I was about to say. He's from Upper Marlboro. Right? Yeah, Markel Foles from Washington is from Upper Marlboro. Yeah. Upper Marlboro. Played Maryland. for DeMatha. Shout Played out for DeMatha. Shout out went to him. Went to Washington. Yeah. Uh, drafted number one to the Sixers. Not far from home. Yeah. And, uh... Playing of course, field. he predicted a long time ago. Lavar Ball said his son was going to play for the Lakers. Oh yeah, and he was taking number two. He was right. Hey, man, shout Lakers. out to Lavar Ball. Get yeah, that man, man his props. Hey, listen, he might be the best hype man since Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. Since Don King. 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 <laughs> yo, I, I say he the new version of Don King, yo. Uh-huh. But but let me say this about Lavar. I started off like hating Lavar because I just wanted him to shut up. But, man, I can't be mad at a man to support his kids like he do. Man, I done turned all the way around on him. I had Because I, I, I started off with that same vibe. But then when I paid attention to what he was doing and mad. how he was doing it, I I, I jumped on his team. And so you shout know out what, to that brother. And you know what I like? And I hope he never changed this about himself. I think the thing that really stood out to me that night at draft is he was all for the fans. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They wanted pictures with him. He didn't do That's the. He playing I'm to his too, audience. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't do the. I'm I'm too big for that. You know, he was dapping the little kids up, and I hope he keeps that keeps that vibe. Man, the you question know what I'm the question about Lavar is, will he go this hard for his other two sons? He has one coming to UCLA, and he has one I believe is a, about to be a senior or junior in high school. Well, he he well, told I believe me. he will. Okay. He told yeah, dude at the draft, I'm I'm gonna do this three times yeah, in a row. Times. So yeah. he 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 feel that he's gonna be back. Mm-hmm. I definitely started rooting for him more once people tried to like put that talk out there about putting his son against him, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I like how they play because I've been seeing Lonzo more now that he, you yeah. know, he's he became a top prospect, and I like his vibe too. He sort of like, yo, that's my father. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He real cool and laid back. Yeah, he's like, that's my father. He gonna do what he do. Yeah. I'm gonna do what I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And I, I man, yeah, I ain't that, got no problem. And he's from LA, so the the bright lights shouldn't bother him. He played for UCLA. That's he's up. from yeah. there. No doubt. Of course, you imagine ain't gonna let too much happen to no his doubt. kid right. out there. No what doubt. what Rip just said that didn't sit well with me either because here is a a black father mm-hmm. in his son's life behind his sons pushing his sons. And you got people in the media talking about you need to rebel against your father. Right. Like when when does anybody ever say that? And what is he doing that's so bad? Exactly. Yeah, what that <laughs> you know how it that is, just man. don't make you sense. But we we all we all know why they saying that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but I don't got no problem with them, man. I, and, and matter of fact, good luck to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, just don't beat my bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right. And finally on the sports note, we uh Y'all man, I'm gonna call him y'all man. Ray Lewis, he was on the. <laughs> I'm a Redskins fan. <laughs> he was on the FS1 show. Speak for yourself with uh Colin Cowherd and Jason Coonlock. I mean Whitlock. I mean. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's the show they they did it on. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. It makes sense now, that. don't it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> makes yeah. perfect sense. This, this he uh, spoke on Colin Kaepernick, and this is the direct quote from that man. Colin Kaepernick has to make up his mind. Do you want to play football or do you want to be an activist? His words. Wow. And Ray Lewis should be the spokesperson for Second Chances. Right. Yeah, because we still ain't found that white suit, Ray Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he should be the spokesperson for Second Chances. And it, it's amazing to me how people can beat murder charges, rape charges, domestic violence, mm-hmm. all this, and get Second Chances and people turn and look away. You know what I'm saying? But this man... Just stood up for something that he believed in. Right. Look, no got, hurt nobody. I got two quick things on this. Go ahead, I'm Scott. not gonna spend too much time on Talk it. Talk to him. First on Ray Lewis. Okay. And I'm quoting Corey Holcomb from the 5150 show on this, because okay. I, I agree with him hundred percent when he said this about Ray. Most black people rooted for Ray Lewis his entire career. That's true. And when he had a chance to stand up for us, he sat mm-hmm. down. That but how how often does that happen? I agree with that hundred percent. Yeah. Now, talking about Colin Kaepernick's situation, as we know right now, he still don't have a deal. Right. Here's the proof of the racism in the NFL. If Colin Kaepernick was standing up for Jewish rights, 
he would be celebrated. Come on, man. If you know he was it? standing up for LGBTQ rights, it's no way in hell the NFL would blackball him. You know it. If he was standing up for women's rights, he'd get a, a deal Later gave 10, him time, commercials. 10 times more than, yep. than what his deal is yeah, worth yeah. now. <laughs> but because he's standing up for black people, they don't want him in the league at all. Oh, yep. And Go and ahead, let, John. And let me tell you something that disturbs me about our people. We'll sit back and let that happen. Yep. It goes back to what I said about the Bill Maher thing. Mm -hmm. We put energy in the wrong hey. thing. Mm -hmm. We now, Bill Maher, oh, we ready to march. We ready to, to, to you know, put up our flag. Uh, uh, hell no, we won't go. <laughs> <laughs> but we quiet. Where, where, where's the, out, where's the uproar? Right. I yeah. feel like all African-American, black, African, whatever, Spanish, what you call it, in the NFL should be going ham about the be. fact right. that every calling up. You, everybody that gets interviewed should have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. Almost to the point where they're ready to strike the NFL. Right. And you know, one, one thing I, I the, the main thing I thought of when Ray Lewis made this comment is a lot of people regard Muhammad Ali as being the greatest is because the things he did outside of the boxing yeah. ring. Facts. And here's the thing. These owners in these sports leagues, they don't want another Muhammad Ali. They don't want another Muhammad Ali. They don't want another popular athlete to speak up about what's really happening, to wake people up, to, to motivate, Facts. To, to move, to organize, Facts. and to get people really out here doing it. Facts. They don't want, the, they don't want LeBron or KD no. or Facts. NFL players. They or, definitely or, don't want LeBron. Or, or, yeah, or <laughs> any of these popular sports stars to be socially conscious and, and to be talking about these issues. They don't want that. And it goes back to what we constantly talked about on this show. It's time for us to start building our own. The reason mm -hmm. why we can't stand up and the reason why we can't protest and the reason why those NFL players won't go on strike is because we're not in position to once they go on strike, what do we do then? Right. Mm -hmm. We're not in a position. It's the same thing with the job atmosphere. It's the same thing with everyday living. The police, we're not in a position to fight anybody because we spend too much time jumping people at pre-Grammy parties <laughs> and we spend too much time Fussing and 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 begging Housewives white folks to treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we spent too much time worrying mm -hmm. about what Kim Kardashian doing. We, you spent too much time playing around. We spent too yeah. much money Playtime on over. on stuff that that serves no purpose. And 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 I'm saying I'm not say, me included. I'm right. saying mm -hmm. yeah. in Everybody. our community, All yeah. us. our All community us. worldwide. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and at the end of the day, that's why I say what I say. It don't it, it don't matter. It don't matter that. Racism is coming back the way it is. It don't matter that a cop can pull me over and kill me in the middle of the street mm. because it's what we, we, we gonna, gonna do. We gonna get on them later. We gonna get on, we them. Gonna get on them later. But it's, 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 <laughs> it ain't nothing we gonna do about it. We just gonna post it on social media and keep on moving. Create a hashtag you think about and it, wait it, for the next one. That's it. Sadly, I mean, as I as I said before, I mean, if we gonna come together, we gotta come together on everything. Yeah, we just like yeah. John said, we just can't pick and choose what we're gonna do. We have to come together. On Selective everything. outrage is what yeah. we called it. Mm -hmm. And when you were speaking about building our own, shout out to Ice Cube. His three on three basketball league start tomorrow. Yes, I that's big. That's big. You can see it on uh, F F FS1, FS1, I believe. FS1. FS1. And hey, I'm gonna support. Every, every, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Hey. I'm, I'm gonna check it out. It. Shout out to Big Baller Brand. Yeah. He said and I don't need Nike. I, I'll do it my own way. And somebody shout said something. I think Rip said it uh, uh, last last podcast where we were talking about all eyes on me. And and we need to do more supporting it. It's, it's black directed, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's put together by black. And it's even changed my views on people like Tyler Perry because for a while yeah. I was like, man, I'm not watching yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. But then at the end of the day, <laughs> I mean, that's a black man. And not right. only Tyler Perry being a black man, he built his own studio. Exactly. He's doing it himself. Yeah. And he's, he's doing it he's himself. Making moves. Yes, and he's we should support moves. that. We, we should got, support yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't always agree with everything, no, exactly. you know, but that's such as life. I'm not going to agree with yeah, everything. Yeah. No, I don't, yeah. But yeah. I think if that man is is building something for us, by us, and hiring us, I think I'm going to support that. Right. And well, moving forward. Remember, people used to joke on the FUBU as yeah, well. Yeah, for yeah. Us by Just like the baller brand. And I'm not spending $500 on no tennis shoes, but when he makes some non-baller brands, I'm supporting them. <laughs> little, little baller. Bro. <laughs> little baller. Bro. You know what I'm saying? For the little pocket people. Ball, make us some shoes, man. I ain't got $500 for no tennis hey, man, shoes. I, I, I'll get a t-shirt or something. Yeah, I'll get a t-shirt, a wristband or something. <laughs> but keep doing what you're doing, man. But, but you know, don't get me started. Yeah. Go ahead. So, that's it? All right, so that's it. Hey, it's the You and You podcast. This is how we do. You know how we do. We, we, we love everybody, but especially our people. 
And that's just that's just what it is. We're not we're not apologetic about, you know, what we say because this is what we feel. That's why we yeah. call the show unproductive and unapologetic. Rip, you was talking about uh, a post that you yeah. came across on Instagram. A post that I came across on Instagram okay. that I saw a lot of people was liking it. And I thought it was something interesting that we could talk about. And the post is re- is reads as, women are supposed to date men with money. It's in a woman's nature to want someone who can support them as well as their dreams. Always remember... Tricking is paying a prostitute for sex. Buying things for a woman and supporting their dreams is called courting. And wanting to genuinely see your woman win independent of you. Mm. What do you feel about this, guy? <laughs> Look, as as men, what, what's the old saying go? Well, I think it was a it was a was it a Biggie Small song? If 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 you broke, girls girls not gonna date you. Mm. Like as as men, we all know that. If you broke girls, it's not going to want to date you. Okay. But I, f- I, mean, I feel like um, it's natural for a woman to seek out a man that's going to be able to provide for them. Okay. And we all know if a man is more financially stable, he's in a better position to be able to provide. Okay. Not saying that he's going to do everything he's supposed to do, mm-hmm. but I'm not mad. I am not mad at any woman who wants a man who – has his stuff together. His stuff together means he got his business together. He's financially sound. When a woman says she wants a man that's going to be a man, that's part of the total package. Okay. Now, the problem comes in, you got a certain percentage of women that's just out here looking for men that are rich. Yep. They want a rich man to take care of them. Yep. And they want to sit up under a rich man. Yep. And basically, it's, it's almost like they want to hit the lottery. Hmm. I'm going to get up under, the man, under a man that got millions of dollars, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to have to worry about anything. Okay. If I got to have a baby bomb, if I date him for a little while and go on a TV show, however I could come up off a man with money, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I don't think that's necessarily what she's saying, but I'm not upset if a woman um, is looking for a man that's going to be able to provide for them. I think that's how women are conditioned. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, so first you said... Is natural for a woman. Then you say that's how women are conditioned. And that's what I was about to get to. Mm -hmm. Is it natural for a woman to be like that? Or is that learned behavior? I think a woman wants a man to be a man. The feminist. No, no, no doubt. Now the feminist. Let me me pause you right there. A a woman wants a man to be a man. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with money. Mm. That's a powerful point. <laughs> now, Go ahead. the feminists may not want to tell you this, but I feel like most women, they looking for a man to be a leader in the household, mm-hmm. and that comes with financial responsibilities. Okay. Can you hold these bills then? Okay. okay. Now, having money, that's all situational. Some women, look, I'll use myself as an example. When I was single, I had you know, a government job my own place, my own car. Mm-hmm. Some women may look at me and be like, he got money. Mm-hmm. And some women may look at me and be like, well, he living in an apartment. He ain't got no money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, it all depends on now, <laughs> your, your now, standpoint. Now, let me hit you with this. All right? So women women want a man to, to be financially together mm-hmm. so he can handle those bills. Mm-hmm. But is that really what they want him to be financially able to do? What you mean? Okay. Case in point. There are a lot of men out here, right? They ain't filthy rich. Mm-hmm. They ain't, they don't make a, an extreme amount of money on their job, but they can hold the bills down. Is that all it takes? <laughs> now I say no. Now I'll say it depends on the woman. <laughs> I say no. When oh, women are talking about they want a man that's financially stable, it's for material BS. Yeah, I don't disagree. I agree the, with the, you. the the financial stability is so you can buy me expensive purses. Mm. Expensive cars, expensive jewelry, expensive clothes. So what you're saying is that's a cold word. That's a that's a dog whistle. I'm saying all that crap is BS. <laughs> <laughs> Women want men with with a lot of money. It ain't cause so he can hold down the bills. Cause if he hold down the bills and y'all living in the house and y'all drive a mediocre car, after a while she gonna be upset with you cause she want things. Mm. Then it's gonna be you don't make enough money. Mm. 
So don't give me this financial stable crap because mm. you need bills paid. Because it's a lot Ain't of dudes that. that can pay the bills. That's true. They just can't do that extra and, bull and, that, that women want to do. And there's a lot of women already out here paying their own damn bills. That's true. And Which what, they what be. disturbs me about this one is that the person who posted this said it's in a woman's nature it's to not. want someone. Hell no. I ain't <laughs> never. Well, women, what's in a woman's nature is a man's attention, his affection, That's his right. damn time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> get him, <laughs> real. That's right. <laughs> Go, and, get it, and, and don't get me wrong. Yes, a real man wants to be in a position where he can hold it down. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It, don't ever fool yourself to think if there's a couple and the man is not the breadwinner that he's totally yeah. comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. But if if a man is in a relationship and he's not the complete breadwinner, there's other things he does as a man that she just can't do. Yeah. See, I I feel like um, having a man and a woman wanting a man is beyond a financial thing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of other things yeah. that you need a man around exactly. for. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And so when when women get into this, oh, I, mean, I want a, I want a man, I want a big baller like uh, Levar Ball say. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with no bills. It's it's all about material bull. Mm. It's all about material bull. And, mm-hmm. and and the reason why I know that is because most of the women that talk that ain't got nobody. I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> and it don't matter if if your lady make a million dollars and you make way less than that, you still the man at the house. And 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 let me let me hit you with another thing. Let me hit you with another thing. Most guys that are in position that these type of women are talking about, yeah, they'll be with you. But guess what? When they go on their business trip, they're going to be with her and her and her Mm -hmm. and her and her. And And when you make yourself so dependent on a man, what you going to do? You're just going to deal with it. You put yourself in a situation to be taken advantage of. And and naturally, a man is going to use his power to his advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what, so you just you just pick your poison. You know what I'm saying? Now, you could go out here and you could get a man and make all this money and da-da-da. I'm like, good luck to you. Because most of the women I see on social media that talk that ain't got nobody. They always <laughs> talk about how they alone and where's Bae and, right. and relationship goals and, you know, uh, <laughs> posting pictures, MCM, I need a man like this, man crush <laughs> Mondays and all. Come on, get out of here with that right. bull. Y'all don't want men. Y'all want purses and rings and to nice show, cars. To show off. To yeah, show it's all off. on Instagram. It's all trendy stuff. It's all, come on, man. It's all man. about the trend. That materialism, that materialism, that, that, that spirit that some women have, that's, that's their downfall. But that's the crazy thing about this, a damn dude posted this. <laughs> that's because he just trying to get some likes. <laughs> that's all that is. That is. <laughs> He's fishing for you. likes. Dudes, dudes say it do a lot of stuff for <laughs> some likes. Let me tell you. He say that, but then when he get a woman that's with him for his money, he ain't going to like it. But what the hell does money have to do with genuinely supporting your woman to be independent of herself? That is the dumbest thing I've that's, ever that's, heard. That's the cold word for give her money. Basically. <laughs> and, 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 and then I would say to that, that man, means. I say to that man, we all are, are a pink slip from being broke. Exactly. Because <laughs> there ain't no, not many black it's, folk got hey, wealth. Nothing is promised. So you, you, we all a pink slip from being broke. Most, most folk are a pink slip from being broke. But so I, then what's going to happen with you and your woman? I she ain't going to be with you no more? The type of woman I want, <laughs> right, I'm a straight, the type of woman I want is Florida Evans. That's the type of Good woman Lord, I want. I <laughs> we, are I we talking Florida, looks or, or, or <laughs> I want, I want. You talking about a hold want, it down type woman. I want the Florida Evans nature woman. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha. She, she was holding it down for uh, James. Yeah, yeah. Broke, losing jobs, back and forth. This job, that job. And it's not like James wasn't trying. Exactly. It's not like James was sitting on the couch doing yeah. nothing. James got up every day. James and had did four jobs. He, but he, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing. And, and she appreciated that effort. And in return, she did what she could do. But you, nowadays, first of all, you got so many. Uh, I, I think we had this conversation in the group chat before where most females that I've either came in contact with, dated, or whatever, da da da, made more money than me. Mm-hmm. Females get paid out here. Yeah. Females ain't hurting for no break. You know what I'm saying? And so that whole notion of uh, you know, women making making I never I never had an issue with that. Because I, I bring to the table 
something more. I mean, don't get me wrong. I work. I make money. Right. But I bring to the table something beyond my pockets. You know what I'm saying? Most relationships that's based off of that, finances, they don't last. Hey. As a man, you have to be wise enough to select a woman that's not looking at you just for what you can do for them. Yeah, but something. at the same time, it's, it's also, finances. these women, some women out here have to allow the man to be a man. That's it's very true. That. Being <laughs> a man is beyond what's in your pocket. Yeah. That's very true. There are some, there are some men that are stay-at-home dads. Mm -hmm. They stay home with the kids. They, you know, deal with the kids, make sure everything's straight, and she go out and she makes the money. I guarantee you, them relationships don't have no problems. One, it takes a man to put his pride aside to take a role like that, one. And two, it speaks volumes for her that she doesn't hold the fact that he's home with the kids against him. Mm -hmm. And I bet you they live happily ever after. That's what it's all about. It's you know the day. ones that have all the problems? It's them chicks you see on Real Housewives hey. and them chicks you see on Love and Hip Hop. Or the chicks that's watching it that's and with these to dudes. It. That's <laughs> with these dudes that have all this money. Because we keep talking about yeah. money. <laughs> Look at their lives. Right. You, you, you talking about the women all these other women trying to be. Exactly. <laughs> Point blank period. Relationship goals. <laughs> Relationship Let's goals. Let's not get on episode four of my room. <laughs> <laughs> Relationship goals. They that's trying to be... Group. On, they want to be walking around with these diamond shoes and diamond dresses and diamond earrings and look. But then sitting at home by themselves wondering where their husband is. <laughs> or got a dude that's buying them all that, but he buying her that, he buying her yep. that, he buying her that. He, you know what I'm saying? Right. For, that's for, what they for do. the female listeners, <laughs> if you have the spirit in you to desire a man who has money just so he can buy you things, just know. It's a ton of other women with that same spirit, and a lot of them probably look a whole, a whole lot better than you. That's it. So that's if, it. If he can snag you, you're gonna be he, running he, the race. He can snag a and bunch of them. And that's not all women. Let's no. Let's, let's keep it one hundred. Women. That's not all no. women. I'm not talking about all women because I, I, there, I know how y'all get out there. There's a demographic of women. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking. Will the women that have the man that she's he's or she whoever that was is talking about? That's living happily ever after. Will you please stand up? Because I don't be seeing them. Yeah. I don't be all seeing I them. See, all I hear is girls asking for a dude's time, his attention, I'm telling his you, affection. Women need attention. That's <laughs> I've, I've been blessed to have some women that told me straight up, look, I don't need your money. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, not, and, not, and, and that doesn't mean that I don't still do things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean that my money is not still in play within a relationship. But... They, don't need, they ain't with me because of my money. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. Because they that. like, you know, oh, you you know, the, my lady right now look at my chick like, oh, your little chick's so cute. Because <laughs> she make that brand. You hear me? <laughs> hey. But it's an interesting book that's out there called uh, Love Languages. And yeah, the five love languages. Yeah, I took that test and I, I encourage everybody to take that test. You need to find out what your love language is. Look, I said on here before. You got to date on your level. Yeah. You mm -hmm. got to date on your level. See, people are focused on the wrong thing. It's not about money. Mm -hmm. Because a person can have money and you can hate to be in their presence. Yeah. That's how you mm -hmm. had a women that be with these guys that got money, but then they call that side piece mm -hmm. because they ain't happy. Yeah. And you know who the side piece be? The nigga with no job. Right. <laughs> But the thing is, like, am I lying? Right, you, you true. Shout out to Littles. Cause when, <laughs> when it come down to it, don't the side piece <laughs> always be a broke yeah, dude? Yeah. You can yeah. have every you can right. you can be with a dude that got his finances straight, got all that bread, but then he whack is mentally head. he ain't got no personality, he ain't got his emotions in check. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm laughing because I got yeah. my boo. Hey, baby. His, 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 his whole attraction is his money. I'm telling you, That's man. That's crazy, man. I'm telling you. But look, I came across a video with, uh, what's her name? I want to say her name right. Yon, a young, uh, young, young Le Van Zandt. Uh, yeah, Yon Le Van Zandt. And she made, she was on Tyrese and Reverend Run's show. I, forget, I think the show called is, is called It's Not You, It's Men. Okay. Yeah, and, It's Not You, It's Men. Yeah, and... One of the questions that they asked was, what was the first question? Uh, about whether she would get married again. Yeah. So they asked her, would she ever get married again? And this was her response. We're going to play the clip for you. Go ahead. 
There's a saying that you grow through what you go through. Right. You've been very public about being married before and some of the challenges that presented itself in your marriages. Uh, if and when you decide to do it all over again, Never. what? Never. <laughs> What do you mean? Never, never, never. I would never, ever, ever. But why did you quit? Why did you commit to the men early on? Well, because I was crazy. And (laughs) you know, here's the thing: relationships are not where we go to have fun. Relationships are where we go to heal and where we go to learn. Uh And who you're going to attract is the person that's going to bring to the forefront the thing you need to learn or heal. Oh! (laughs) So, or the thing that's going to help you grow the most. You know, I heard you talking about your wife, and she helped you grow from just being a rapper and a street guy into really shifting into a whole nother thing. She was showing me a whole new life. A whole nother life. And some people will help us heal our daddy issues or our insecurity if we really understand that. I went into the relationships that I went into. There were only three of them. I married the same man twice. (laughs) You don't get it the first time you do that thing again, you know? Uh, Because I was looking for my father's approval. Mm -mm. Hello, my beloveds. Thank you. So, what do you think about that, Sky? She dropped a bomb on that one. Yeah. Um, She sounds like a sister that's been through some things. Mm -hmm. She was married a few times, and she said she's not doing it no more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at that, but I... I agree with what she said. She said relationships is somewhere you go to grow mm-hmm. and, and you go to heal. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking from from personal experience, every woman that I've been in a relationship with, I've I've grown from that experience. Yes. And the, the lady that I'm currently with, love you, babe. I, <laughs> I, I know you're going to be watching. She's she's definitely, we've definitely helped each other grow. Mm-hmm. And we've helped each, each, each other heal from different things we've experienced in our lives. So that's very true. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um... I only plan on getting married one time. I feel you. I'm, I definitely plan on marrying the lady I'm with. I'm only doing it one time. If it don't work out, I don't think I'm ever going to get married again. Brother, I just had this conversation. But, 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 that's, but that's me. No, no and, and, yeah, that's yeah, me. yeah, I just had this conversation. And until, until the relationship that I'm in now, I was, I've been married before. Let's put that out there. I've been married before. I'm divorced. And until the relationship that I've got in now, I was on the same wave. I'll never do it again. So when she said that, I totally knew, I totally knew where she was coming from. I feel where she's coming from. Now, for me, <laughs> let me tell you. I think my views have changed on a lot of things through my experiences. Mm-hmm. Okay, I used to have this feeling or envision of marriage that I don't have anymore. Let me explain. I think a lot of shit is cliche. I think if you're going to be committed in a committed relationship, that's what you're going to do. Period. I don't think marriage is, uh, I don't think marriage determines your level of commitment or what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, so, so let me break it down. I'm commit. I'm in a committed relationship with my with my lady, mother, my children. You know what I'm saying. As far as I'm concerned, in my eyes, I'm already married. I've been married before, so right. I know what it entails. Everything that I did in my marriage and the commitment that I had in my marriage, I do it now. I'm committed the same way now. I don't. This is just me talking. I don't need a reverend or a courthouse mm-hmm. to say, "Okay, y'all married." I already act on that. I already carry myself that way. The only thing that getting married does is give her legal right to curry my last name. To me, this this is me speaking. It's a legal arrangement. It's a legal arrangement. So it's all about paper. Marriage to me now mm-hmm. is not this uh, this princess and the no. and the, pr- the, the prince no. walk all that walk. It's not about none of that. It, to me now, it's mm-hmm. marriage is paperwork. It's a business with the government. <laughs> it's, it's paperwork. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna be with you, I'm gonna be with you. If I'm not, I'm not. Tell me I'm lying. Most of, most marriages in America end in divorce. That's true. You're not lying. So let's not let's not stay, let's not sit here and act like oh, and me and my lady just had this conversation last night. I said, babe, let's not sit here and act like because we go get papers that that's gonna guarantee we're gonna be in a committed relationship. No. Married people cheat every day. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So now on the flip side though, I probably would be getting married again because that's something that my lady wants. It's something that she looks forward to. And it would be unfair of me 
to have done it before. And here I am in the relationship that I probably wish I had all along. And not do it again. Not do it again. I you know see. what I'm saying? So she hates when I say this. I'm doing it again for you, babe. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I would never walk down the aisle again. But I'm going to do it for her. What would you think about what she said, Rip? Uh, I agree with her to a certain extent that, you know, you are going to learn and grow if in any relationship that you deal with. But mm -hmm. I don't feel that a relationship is just for learning and growing. You should have fun in your relationship. And it kind of, I've heard her say this before, and it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable because she's a relationship expert and, you know, she helps people so much. But I kind of feel like, in my view, that she's still holding on to some type of mm. fear-based attachment that prevents her from wanting to get married again. Mm. So, But let me say this. Some people, and, and I said, I had a conversation with somebody and I said this to them. Everybody, marriage is not for everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? And the, the ones that want to do it, so be it. I know somebody personally right now, him and his lady, who, um, believe it or not, had a baby the same exact day as my son was born. His son uh, and my okay. son was born on the same exact day. They've been together like 20-something years. And I, I'm not going to say his name, but I always ask him, I said, man, you going to get married? He was like, nope, for what? <laughs> we happy. I'm committed. She's committed. Now we got a kid. Right. We've been doing this for 20 get, For it, what? It works for them. It works. It, I don't think marriage is a necessary thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, if you're going to be committed, you're going to be committed. Yeah. If you're not, you're not. Yeah, married I, or not. You know I, what I'm saying? And I have know plenty of marriages that I'm not married and I've never been married, but I've seen plenty of marriages that like I'm like, what the hell did y'all get married for? Oh, why y'all still together? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're unhappy. <laughs> you hate each other. You try to kill it. It reminds me that uh, it, I might be going back too far, but they had this skit on Living Color where uh, David Isla Greer and Dwayne and sister, mm -hmm. they were an old couple, and they kept trying to do stuff to kill each other, but they kept saying, <laughs> yeah. but we still together. <laughs> we still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, why are y'all together? You know what I'm saying? I, I firmly believe Marriage is not for everybody, you know what I'm saying. In in her defense, she might just feel, she might be one of yeah, those people. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a great relationship. No, with definitely. Somebody. I don't. I didn't take yeah. it. Her saying it though, I didn't quite take it like that. She was. I mean, of course, you're gonna have fun in your relationship. But people have this illusion that it's it's supposed to be sunny every day. In the minute it's not sunny, but that, you you out of it. That's when it comes down to what you were saying, the cliche part. It's the the fan the fantasy part, the fairy tale part. Because I've exist. met I've met a lot of people who who were just stuck in this fairy tale story that a marriage has to be this way, a relationship has to be this way. We got to do it this way. We got to do it that way. Like one funny thing, I was watching the Love Connection today, mm -hmm. and that still come it, on. Yeah, wow. it, it just it just recently came back on. Wow, and <laughs> it was a a black a black lady, and she was dating three three guys. Mm -hmm. The three guys happened to be white guys. So Andy Cohen asked her, so you have a preference for white guys, huh? She said, yeah, but you know, because I just look at it like, you know, uh, I look at it like a fairy tale. You know, when you think about, think about back, in, back in the day with the fairy tale story, Cinderella and stuff, you have these knight in shiny armor white guys. And I was like, whoa. She was black? <laughs> yeah, she was wow. black. And she said that on national TV. Wow. That she look at these white guys as the fairy tale <laughs> picture of the stories from back in the day. Wow. Well, that's that's all that was out there back then. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't no black princes and, in the story. Yeah, like. that's think true. Think about when Brandy did Cinderella. Yeah. yeah. The prince was a white guy. He sure was. <laughs> so I, I feel like a lot of times, mostly women, a lot of the women that I've had conversations with, they, they're they stuck in a fairy tale aspect of what a relationship should yeah. be like instead of actually just going along with whatever comes and, and doing, then, doing and, the work of the relationship. And then to top it off, they, they fall in love for dudes that's so far from a fairy tale <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you, and it's just the most confusing thing to me. I'm like, y'all have this fantasy in your in your mind, but the guys y'all pick is nowhere near this fantasy in no, your man. mind. They make excuses <laughs> to keep subjecting themselves to the, to the negative 
negative aspects of their relationship. A lot of people get Facts. married for the wrong reasons. Oh, yeah, exactly. every point. Yeah. I just want to ask a question from you know on the outside looking okay, in about relationships. Ahead. Do you feel most people get married because they feel like that's what they're supposed to do? Yes. Yeah. That definitely plays mm-hmm. a huge role. Uh, yes. Because you have people around you, your friends and family, when you're going to get married. Oh, girl, I got married. Oh, I just got engaged and all that type and of it's, stuff. And it's, it's so in, it's embedded so deep in us and so deep in our psyche. You know what right. I'm saying? That it's almost like, and I hate to go here, religion. Yeah. It's embedded so deep in us and so embedded deep in our psyche. It's like you can't. If you stray away from that, that's the worst thing ever. Like, no, my mama did it. Her mama did it. Her mama, mama. You'll feel like the black sheep or something if you don't follow that. Exactly. Because growing up, you you see it like, and I'm basing this all on like TV as a kid. You grow up, you go to school, you graduate high school, you go to college. You go to college, Mm -hmm. you find your wife, you get married, you get a single family home with the white picket family. The idiot. And then have kids. The idiot. It's it's great programming. It's programming. It's great programming. But let me give this disclaimer. I have no problem with people getting married. Hey. I have no issue. I think marriage is a beautiful thing, but I also feel that it's it doesn't it's not something that has to happen hey. for you to have a no. great healthy relationship. Love Just like Usher important. said, my way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do it my way. Yeah. In yeah. relationships, way. love is important. We got too many people getting yes. married and not enough people that really love each other. Hey. Well, just, but a lot of people married. don't know what love is. I got a funny take <laughs> on the love thing too, but we ain't going to get into that. <laughs> and it was another thing uh, Ayani yeah. said uh-huh. that I wanted to ask y'all about. We're going to play the clip. Go ahead. All right. Meta quit. Mm-hmm. And in your opinion, why does it seem so hard for men to commit compared to women like why what is what is what happens why do they why are we what's this force field that stops us from like well you know i i think that in this western world that we have unrealistic expectations of our partners i want you to make me happy earn the money father the children wash the car take out the trash and be good in the bed as you brush your teeth and and have your vision and pay your bills on time that's 10 things and you know, and you only get 11 25. And, and make sure you put the toothpaste top right. on. Right, come on. And the toilet seat down, you know? <laughs> Too much. So I really think, I don't think it's that men are afraid to commit. I think it's that they are leery about whether or not they can live up to the demands and the expectations mm. that are placed upon them in a relationship. Mm. Oh, man. That I, is that's just my that's a lot, Reese. <laughs> I don't know. Think about that, Reese. Oh, that's, 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 that's. What do you think about that, Sky? <laughs> I, let me tell you something. Go ahead. Your famous statement. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I just need to hear it. <laughs> what she said was so powerful. <laughs> Take a shot, you. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> look, look. I'm not talking about anybody in particular, babe. I'm not talking about you. Mm-hmm. I'm talking in general. A woman could be an absolute mess, but she expects her man to do everything perfect. And if you don't do everything perfect, you're going to hear that weapon of mass destruction that she calls her mouth. Mm-hmm. And she's going <laughs> to run that thing mm-hmm. until you, you want your head to explode. Mm-hmm. Everything, has, like she said, she expects you to do a ton of things just right. Mm-hmm. And, and it's you know, unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. in a relationship unrealistic expectations of your partner, if you got a person with that mindset, that will drive you absolutely crazy. Now, Mm -hmm. getting to what she said, why men are afraid to commit, I think that depends on, number one, the stage a man is in his His life life, as far as his maturity. Mm -hmm. Age ain't got nothing to do with 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 maturity. maturity. You could be 35 years old and still have a mentality of a a 20-year-old player. I I know a bunch of them. If that's what you want to do. A a lot of men, they they just, I'm not going to say a lot of men. Some men just aren't ready to commit. Mm -hmm. Some men look at it it, and think, well, if I commit to you, I'm going to be missing out on all Mm -hmm. these other women out here. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on who you dealing with, their maturity level, and what they want to do. Sit down and have an honest conversation with the person that you're with. Do you want to be in a committed relationship? Because it could be a situation. I've seen a lot of situations where the woman wanted to be in a committed relationship, but the the particular dude they was interested in, he didn't want nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. we could get together, we could kick it, we could have our fun, but, you know, I'm I'm out here doing things. I don't want to be tied down just just, just, just to you. Right, right. What do you think about it, Rip? I agree with what she said, and 
I definitely feel that it's definitely, I agree with Scott, it's definitely based on the individual. I feel like it could be a lot of factors, maturity, it could be generational things as far as what you've seen with your parents and it could be like a whole psychological type of thing with it. Mm -hmm. And I also look at it like, um, like you were saying earlier, that it's a lot of programming. Mm -hmm. And when you have so many things that you see on TV, uh, commercials of wedding dress sales and mm -hmm. all this other stuff, that these things are programmed in, in women's minds that these are the things that they need to focus on, mm -hmm. that these are the priorities of their life. Mm -hmm. And these things are all based on consumer-related type situations where they just want to make money. Mm -hmm. But they know where to hit the women, the program, them, yep. that this is the things that they need to focus on. Yep. But we don't focus on the true aspects of what the relationship should be about. And that's, you know, the communication, trust, love, all that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about it. It reminds me of an episode of uh, Martin. When she talk about uh, <laughs> men and commitment. And as soon as she started talking about it, I don't know why, but this episode <laughs> came to my mind. And, you know, Martin was telling them that he, he was going to marry Gina. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Cole was like, well, Martin, I'm never getting married. Because when they load up the freak train, a brother like me going to have a front row seat. <laughs> it's just some dudes out here. That's how they think. That's how they think. They're... Their goal and aspiration in life is to get with as many women as they can. Yeah. They want to have their cake at 82. They want to do their thing. Now, what she said is dead on, but it's not blanket every man. Yeah. No. Every man has their different reasons for why they mm -hmm. want to commit. They won't commit. I'm, I'm always going to keep it 100. There are a lot of men out here that will hang on to a female or keep a female around because she fills a certain void. Usually it's sex. Let's keep it 100. If sex was out of the picture of a lot of relationships, yeah. mm -hmm. the dude would not deal with you. Men are very physical. Men are very physical. That's why it's, it's very important, one, that you don't lead into a relationship off of sex. Yeah. And you don't try to use sex to curry a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't stand to be, if all y'all have to lean on in y'all relationship is the sex is good, then you have nothing. No, you don't have, have a relationship. You, you have absolutely no, nothing. You got a sex partner. And there's a lot of women that's in love with dudes that just like the sex. Mm -hmm. They don't like you. <laughs> they don't like being around you. That's why you have women complain, all he do is spend time with his boys. Because guess what? After he finished, he don't want to be around you. But when right. he finished hanging with the boys, you know what he want? He wants some action. That's what you're there for. And in our commercial for the show, I say, men don't get as much attention as women do. That's true. So when they get some attention, it's like the greatest thing that ever happened to them. If a man can get a woman hooked on him, a woman that he really don't want, he gonna keep her just close enough because he knows she has a thing for him. Mm -hmm. He just wants you for one thing. He ain't gonna never come out and say that. But it's gonna be certain things that he does that keeps you just in at bay. You know what I'm saying? Women are very emotional. Yes. Once women have sex with you, they, there's an emotional attachment that happens. Mm -hmm. And so... They will look past a lot of things because of that emotion. And dudes know this. And they use it to their advantage. You know what I'm saying? Now, what she said, yes, sometimes the demand that women have on men is crazy. <laughs> but let's look at society as a whole. Society as a whole caters completely to women. Yes. Okay. Let me give you an example. Oprah Winfrey had a show that was predominantly women, about women. There's a show that comes on now during the day called uh, The Real. The Real mm -hmm. Women. 
There's a show that comes on another station that's got the um the girl that used to sing in the girl group and uh T the T and Tamara chick. That's the real. That's, yeah, the, that's real. the real. Okay, and the other one is the view. The view. The view. Yeah. That's for the older women. women. When you go to a magazine stand, women. all the magazines about how your relationship be and how men you need to deal with your man that is women. The men's section for magazines is big booty chicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the shows on TV, whether it's Real Housewives or this or that and the third, whatever the case may be, women. <laughs> and it caters to women so much that it's got women programmed to think ain't nothing wrong with them. Their problem is men. Everybody's saying, women, you are great. You are this, which they are. Don't get me wrong. But your problem is men. You bringing out something <laughs> that's so on point. <laughs> and I didn't know you was going to go there, but why are you here? Okay. Pop culture, especially in America, is designed around worshiping women. Yes. Putting women on a pedestal. Yes. The mall is designed for women. It's like, I was in there It's like three, three stores in there for guys. I was in 55 there 55 stores <laughs> in there designed for women. I was in the Rundle right. Mills today, and I'm like, everything in here is for women. The magazine business. Women caters to women. Television. Women. Designed to cater to women. Yeah. Women. Women is so great. So wonderful. Mother's Day. You got to worship the woman, woman on Mother's Day. Yes. Father's Day. F him. And they sit around. <laughs> who, who is he? They sit around all day, every day, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, whether it's on the phone, group text, whatever. And they big each other up. And they talk about how great they are mm-hmm. and how bad their man is or how bad men are or how and so that if that is constantly the conversation all the time, all the time, then of course they're gonna come home with these crazy outlandish mm-hmm. and it takes a real bona fide man to be able to nip that in the bud you in that your out. situation. Yeah, bring that out of her. And and if you let Society and pop culture condition your woman. In a woman's mind, every obstacle, every problem she has is because of a man. It's because of a man. And if you her man, every problem she has is because of you. If yep. you was doing what you were supposed to do, if you was doing X, Y, Z, her life they, would be so much but they just, But they just playing off on... What they've been told. On, yeah. And even like Condition. a lot of women, daddy issues. They just playing off of that. It's just Look, attachments that they too. have with the stuff that they going through. She could be, she could be deadbeat. She could be jobless, mm-hmm. sit on the couch all day, watch TV all day, don't shower, don't do nothing. You still can't say nothing bad about her. But let a dude do that. We the worst thing that ever happened to the world. <laughs> if a dude can do everything exactly like that woman, and you can't say nothing bad about that woman. Why? Well, she, t- she, take, she do the best she can. Ain't that what we say about women? She trying her best. T- <laughs> they don't say that about us. Let me take it one step further. <laughs> <laughs> don't get in trouble now. This is going to get me in trouble, what I got to say. All right, go ahead. I'm just speaking in general. I'm not talking about nobody specific. Right. A woman can be a deadbeat. Everything you just said, she could be a deadbeat and she can have children. Mm-hmm. All she got to do is she'll fill out paperwork and she'll get a check. The man. Facts. If he can't keep up with whatever... The government say he got to pay that woman that's a deadbeat. They'll throw him in jail. Facts. Or oh, a prison, I'm sorry. Facts. So uh, once again, society is set up to cater to the woman. And it goes back to, to jump back a little bit about the whole financial thing. I've done my own personal surveys. Now, this, this, this might not equate to um, white men and white women. Okay. But black women to black men, I put up any amount of money. Overall, they crushing black men and how much money they Definitely. get. Definitely. Uh, you talking about, oh, you talking about fi- finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Black women overall versus black men overall, women are crushing men. Mm-hmm. Now, it might not be like that in, in you know, amongst Caucasian or that's a whole different ball game. But that's I'm telling you, in amongst the, our people, in hey, the, amongst our people mm-hmm. sisters make the bread. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So when I hear that going back, when I hear that stuff about, oh, he need this amount of, you, you ain't woke, like we say. You ain't woke. Oh. And I guarantee you the one that's talking about the man need to make all that money don't work. Mm. She get a child support check. <laughs> she get assistance from the county or the government or whatever. I bet you she don't work. 
I bet you she don't work. And so it's so going back, yeah, some men are like, yo, woman, you 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 ask them for I gotta battle society out there and then come in here and battle you. Mm-hmm. Hey. You know what? When I <laughs> when I listen to women complain about their man, because they'll complain about their man to everybody. All over Facebook. Oh yeah. All over Instagram. All at the job. They man ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. He ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. You better know. And I sit up and I look at them and I think to myself, you ain't no, you know, it's it's not easy being with you. Right. <laughs> like what right. do you do? Do, right. do do you cook? Do you clean? Do you do the laundry? Do do, do you manage the household? Do you do the things you're supposed to be doing as a woman? You always talking about what this man ain't doing. But you know, I see you every day. I see your attitude. I'm, he, you know, I, mm-hmm. I feel sorry for this brother because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he got to be with you. Look, Let me jump in here. Real go ahead. Quick. <laughs> All right, yeah. ladies, we need your comments on this. We need your feedback. I know they probably got plenty to say. Yeah, <laughs> we definitely want to hear. We gonna get chewed out on this, <laughs> one. especially about Scott. <laughs> but I'm I'm about to get in the blogger mode right here. Okay. Okay, so Scott, I'm just piggybacking off of what you said go about for it. the women complaining about their men. Ladies, if you sit around complaining all day about your man, your baby father, or whatever, that's all you are going to see. All day long, complaining, that's all you're going to see. That's all you're going to attract from that situation. Yep. So if you start taking a little positive outlooks, perceptions, perspectives on things with your man, You'll get some positives out of that situation. Yep. Don't solely focus on the negatives yep. of the situation because that's all you're going to bring into your relationship, your reality. That's all you're going to attract. Mm-hmm. So try for for just one week, every day. Just try to find some positive mm-hmm. in <laughs> your man, your baby father, whatever relationship you in, mm-hmm. and just. You know, just watch that something better is going to come out of it. It's funny you say that. I had a conversation with a young lady about a year ago, and um, she she worked at she worked at one of the um, stores near my job. We was we was just talking because come to find out, I knew her her sons or I don't even know if she got a son or daughter, but her her child's father plays the same instrument. He plays bass. I play bass. He plays bass. Okay. And come to find out, I knew him. He he played for a, a band that I was familiar with. Okay. So long story short, you know, she was just talking and she was just, you know, talking about some stuff that they was going through, whatever. I think at this time they were on the outs of the relationship or whatever. <clears throat> and she was she was just, you know, going on, 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 on about him. And I said, let me ask you something. I said, how often when y'all was in a relationship, I said, how often did you talk, um, you know, how often was the conversation not about you coming down his street? Or, or, you know, how often was the conversation not about you talking about what he's not doing right? Okay. And she was like, oh, I mean, you know, we, you know, I wasn't like that. I mean, most of the time, yeah, we argued and we da da da. And I was like, most of the time the arguments came because you was probably complaining about something. Yeah, you could kind of say that. And it's going back to what Rip said. I was like, won't you try to stop complaining so much? Yeah. Flip the switch and start stop starting your conversation with a negative. Right. Talk about some positive shit. Say something good that he did. Or right. say something, you know. Mm-hmm. Arguments happen most times because the tone is set up wrong from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And another thing I said to her, I said, stop trying to get to stop trying to talk about the deep stuff when y'all already mad at each other mm-hmm. slide that stuff in when y'all having a good time and it's not what you say it's how, how you, you say, say it. it women love to piggyback when it's already a bad move right. yep. you know what i'm saying now it started out she was mad at you because you forgot to take out the trash but why she on it about you not taking out the train. She's going to bring up everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that happened. All, all you know what I'm saying? And that's not the time. You got to let go of some things. You can't hold on to things. It's the saying, pick your battles. Yeah. I tell my girl all the time. I say, it's some things that you do that irk me, but it ain't worth an argument. Yeah. Exactly. If 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 my girl, she, I tell her, I was like, you love to pile stuff up. 
you will make a pile anywhere. It's a pile of mail on the table. It's a pile of clean clothes on the bed. It's a pile of dirty clothes on the chair. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you love, and it, it drives me crazy, but I don't think that's worth an argument. Right. Most times, and she'll test, if it's a pile of clean clothes on the bed, you know what I end up doing? Folding them. Because <laughs> if it, my thing is, if it irks me that bad, then do something about it. Mm -hmm. right. It ain't worth an argument and, and getting into a fight about it. And that's what we have to start doing on both sides. Yeah. We have to start finding those places of compromise. When you start finding those places of compromise, you make life a You're whole You're just lot not better. going to earn nothing from, from being, being negative, negative yeah. and complaining and stuff. We just got to start building each other up. It's, it won't hurt. It's only going to bring more positive to the situation by building each other up. That's it. Right. That's if, it. If you want to make your relationships better, you got to have constructive conversations. Hey, it's about Facts. work. You constructive in relationship, you, let's fix it. You got to put in work in relationships. Facts. It's not fairy tales. You got to put no. in work. Trust <laughs> me, it's not a fairy tale, and it never will be one. It's the You and You podcast. That's right. We just chopping it up here tonight. Episode 8. Number 8. You got to love it. You got to love it. We're going to come right back. It's the You and You podcast. <laughs> so women don't trip off attention like men do, okay? Now, when a man gets some attention from a woman, we geek. Yes. Because that don't happen <laughs> yeah, to oh, us man. all the time. Except I mean, rip. Except, except rip. rip. You know? <laughs> like Rip said, everybody subscribe on YouTube. Facts. You and you radio. That's the letter U, the and sign, the letter U, radio. radio.